Hey guys, welcome to another video. So before we start, I would like to do some slight disclaimers. Um, if you hear any background noises, that's the Roomba or my little siblings. This is not a breeding care guide. And we are also joined by my cat, Tracy. So if you hear meowing, um, that will be why. So please watch, do you, please do your research before you get crest at Gecko. And go watch other YouTube channels and learn about crested geckos, um, altitude geckos, leopard gecko, um, go herping, jeez, tiki geckos. Just name a few. There are a lot other um, channels out there. Just make sure you, you do um, process of elimination and see what's liable and what's unliable. So we're going to be going, talking about the gecko, the actual crested gecko. We're talking about housing, diet or food, maintenance, temperament and handling, price and availability. Excuse me. About crested geckos live 15 to 20 years. So please make sure that this is going to be an animal that you are going to want. Crested geckos are also known as cresties or eyelash geckos. Crested geckos can drop their tail, sometimes for no reason, but for the majority of the time, when they are spooked, you can see the crested geckos up in the right photo are considered frog butts in the crested community, just because they don't have their tail. It's not going to affect their quality of life. It's just going to take them a little bit to get their, get their balance back, and then they will be fine. You can tell by a male and a female because males will have a bulge at the base of their tail. And this just has a, um, these have pores on them, so you're going to need different surfaces for them, for them to rub their pores on. And if you don't, they will get clogged pores. And this can be solved, as I mentioned, further on in the video. Females will, some females don't and some females do, will lay eggs. Now these are infertile eggs and you can just discard them once she has laid them. Um, you will know your female will be laying eggs once you see her burying herself into the soil. She's laying eggs at that time. Don't mess with her. Give her about 12 to 24 hours to herself. And then when she's gone, go check, bury, uh, unbury the eggs and you can discard them or let the cleanup crew, if you're doing a bioactive tank, eat them. Crusty geckos do shed. They don't have scales. They have very, they have, I guess they kind of do have scales, but they have a very velvety, very soft, fragile skin. Um, so they do shed. However, you, sometimes you won't notice when they shed because they do eat it. However, on a daily basis, just make sure to check their toes, limbs, head, tail, if they have it, to make sure there's no stuck shed because they may shed overnight and you won't know. And because if the shed builds up on the toes or anywhere else, it will restrict the blood flow, blood flow and they can lose nails. Um, actually, yeah, they can lose nails, toes, sometimes in severe cases, limbs. And crested geckos are from a little island called New Caledonia. And they were once thought to be extinct and, that, and now they are flourishing today. So let's talk about housing. For temperature and humidity, Temperature, I don't know, it's the temperature. And then humidity is the amount of moisture or water in the air. Crazy the gecko's from New Caledonia. New Caledonia is a pretty moderate temperature, so they do like it around room temperature, so about 70 to 80 degrees. Anything too much cooler than 70 or 65, you're going to want to add a heat mat. Anything too much hotter than 80, you might want to add a fan just to help with the temperature. Humidity, they like it around 70 to 80 degree, 80% 80 humidity when you first spray them down, then they like the humidity to be dropped. They like the, um, then the humidity drops midday, and then you spray them again in the evening to boost it back up, and then they have another dry up period. Because the geckos don't like when you have it consistently humid, they like to have these fluctuations in the humidity. If not, you can cause serious health issues. So tank mates. This is a really controversial topic in the crested gecko community, mainly because it's iffy. 
So if you are going to house two or more crested geckos together, you are going to only be able to house females. If you are breeding, you're going to need three fem two to three females per male um, in the tank so the male won't overstress one female. And that's only if you're really breeding females. You're going to need a much larger tank, and you're going to make sure you do interaction before you house them together to make sure they're not going to fight because there could be fatalities if you put them together unsafely. But that is a completely different video. Size and dimensions for the tank. So if you have a, uh, if you have a pair or more, you may want to up the sizing a little bit to make sure that they have enough room. And if they are territorial, there's enough space for all of them. So for a hatching or a baby crested gecko, you're gonna want a five gallon tank. Of course, I put dimensions because um, Exoterra, Zoomed are just, um, are good, really nice enclosures for crested geckos. Um, they are semi-arboreal, meaning that they range from ground level to six to eight feet up on tree trunks. So around three foot is where they like to hang out the most. So juveniles, you want about a 10 gallon tank, again, turned up on its side, and a adult in a, uh, minimum for an adult is 10, but we like to have it at 15 um, to 30 gallon. For the dimensions, there is one exoterra tank, an 18 by 18 by 36. It's a really, really nice big tank for a crested gecko, and if you really want to spoil them, it's like 300 bucks, a little expensive, but it does make a great, amazing, phenomenal tank. There are other ways you don't have to use tank. There are DIYs. You can use a, you can buy plexiglass and kind of make your own. Use old fish tanks. Um, don't use screen. You can have maybe like a screen door or something, but, or a screen top, but you're not going to want screen um, 360 because... Um, they need humid. They need slightly higher humidity, so they are. Um, the screen will just let it escape too much, and glass will kind of help keep it in. Um, another good option is a tub. Tub, um, large tubs do great. I personally like if you're gonna use tubs, get the ones that have those doors that that open, um, and it's not just like a clip-on lid. And again, you can have it straight down as long as it's two feet tall, or you can prop it up depending on what brand you use or whatever. So bioactive or artificial, um, it just depends on what you want to do. Quar you should always quarantine your animal before you put them in an official setup if you are doing bioactive. For example, if you do a DIY foam background and your gecko is sick, you're going to have to tear down the background or throw away the entire tank and start from scratch because the virus could potent or mites or whatever sickness will stay in the background or other items like cork bark. That's why quarantining your animal is great and that's why I love artificial for quarantining your animals because you can just sanitize or discard it and not really have to pay too much money. Um, but bioactive, once you quarantine your animals and they're healthy, bioactives are so nice. You don't have to clean up their poop. And with old food, you can just put it at the bottom and the cleanup crew will go ahead and eat that for you. The cleanup crew will also eat any decaying plant matter. Um, the only work you're going to have to do with a bioactive tank is trim down the plants every once in a while and wipe down the glass from water, from dried water droplets from you misting the tank, which is not a whole lot of work. So that's why I personally like bioactive. It's a one-time buy kind of thing, but it also just depends on um, your situation. So let's go over decor for crested geckos. You're going to be needing a some kind of food and water dish. You can have this on the ground or hanging up. It doesn't really matter. Again, this is also a controversial topic in the com crested gecko community. However, not one, it's not a really a heated one. It's kind of just very docile. Um, so please give your crested gecko a standing dish of water. They may not drink from it, but just give them the option if they want to, because they will drink from the droplets when you spray the tank. 
You're also going to need to treat the water with either RepiSafe, which is a water conditioner with added minerals, um, or you going to want to treat it with regular fish tank um, conditioner. Just remove metals, um, unnecessary chemicals, and minerals in the water. Um, either one does fine. Uh, another thing are vines and branches, as you can see in the bottom left photo. That's a great photo of a really nice tank setup. I don't know what brand they're using. That may look like in some kind of exoterra, but as you can see, they have a lot of branches, bamboo sticks, vines. It's very, very nice. Again, artificial plants. You want very leafy. You want to have a lot of bottom and top decorations because that's going to make your gecko feel much safer and give them more places to hide. And you may be like, well, I don't want my gecko hiding. Well, if they feel safe enough and they know they have tons of hiding places, they're going to come out more because they feel safer. You know, there's always live plants, live vine plants, snake plants, and then there's like bottom plants, background plants, etc., etc. And then there's actually coconut hides. You can purchase them and you can also make them yourself. Just buy a coconut, um, take out all the insides, drill holes, and you have yourself a hide. Leopard Gecko has this for her Crested Gecko tank, and her Crested Gecko loves them. She has her own DIY videos on how to make them. So paper towel or coconut husk. So these are two very popular substrates for Crested Geckos. Um, I think paper towel is great if you are quarantining your um, Crested Gecko before you put them in a official setup so you, so you can monitor their dirt so you can monitor their droppings, which sounds really gross, but if their mo droppings are messed up, then they may have a sickness or they may have um, internal parasites. Another thing, um, the paper towel, people don't like, some people don't like coconut husk, um, like Eagle Earth, because it will cause impaction, which is completely false. There are studies and scientific um, evidence that this does not cause impaction. Sand, however, does. Don't ever use sand for any of your animals, ever, ever, ever. No matter what kind of sand, calcium sand, any sand, that causes impaction, not ego earth. If you disagree with me, then don't watch my videos. Okay, okay. I mean, everyone's allowed to have their own opinion, but when it's scientifically proven and it affects the quality of your animal's life, and puts their life in danger. I don't care if you have an opinion on it. It is what it is and accept it and change it. You can just, just do paper towel. There's nothing wrong with it. It just looks less naturalistic, looks less cool, but it's so much better than sand. Sorry, I went on a little bit of ramble with that. I'm very, very passionate when I talk about that. And I feel if something scientifically proven and there are many studies and tests on it, then why would you still be using it if you know it's bad for your animal? So let's go about food or diet. Crested geckos are omnivorous, meaning they eat fruit and meat. Um, Rapashi and live insects and Pangea are also really great food. So powder or live. So... Um, many people say you just feed them live insects. Many people say just feed them powder diet. I personally believe that you should do both. Um, they do eat both in the wild, so I'm going to not give them both in captivity. Some come with insects in them. However, that's not as nutritious and not as enriching, whatever, mentally si simulating what they need if it's just mixed into the powder. And you can just... Go get some crickets, gut load them for a few days, and feed them to your crested gecko like one, like one to three times a week. It doesn't have to be consistent like a bearded dragon. With um, your insects, you are going to want to dust them with calcium and calcium one feeding and then multivitamin the next feeding. If not, you're going to get melt block bone disease. As you can see, this crested gecko has that in the bottom photo. Crested geckos don't really need lighting. Um, however, you are going to need a UVB light to activate the calcium or 
it's not going to work, then there's really no point of giving them calcium because you need UVB to activate the calcium. UVB bulbs aren't super expensive. You don't need a super strong UVB bulb. Um, again, another props, another good thing about getting UVB besides they needing it for calcium is that it also gives them a day-night cycle. Um, Melbourne bone disease is a, it, um, it's not contagious or anything. It's just when the bones don't have enough calcium and they deform and harden in a different way, which can affect the quality of life for your gecko. There is minor and severe melanchthonic bone disease, or MBD. Um, I personally like Pangea more than Rapache, although I think both are a really great brand. Um, Rapache, Pangea just has a lot more um, different flavorings. All right, guys, so now we're going to talk about maintenance. If you hear um, any background noises, that's my brother. Um, our rooms are right next to each other, and he is playing with a friend on his Xbox right now. So it may be a little, lot, um, a little bit more background noise than we had earlier into the video. It's the only time you're really going to need to bathe your crusty gecko. It's not very common. However, a bath here and there throughout the month or the year is not going to harm them. It can actually be very good for your gecko, especially if they're having a harder time passing food and whatever. Um, also, if your gecko, if you have a male gecko and he has clogged pores, giving him a bath is so great. By bathing your crusty gecko, you're soaking them in a shallow container of lukewarm water where it's just kind of their belly in the water, not to the point where they're having to swim or anything, or struggling to keep their head above the water. Uh, another thing is once you're done, soaking them it can be like 15 minutes to an hour so about 20 to 30 minutes that's great and then you can take a damp q-tip and very gently just rub the clogged pores and they should unclog very easily so spot cleaning is another thing you have to do um and this is only with artificial the only spot cleaning you need to do in a bioactive tank setup is um again wiping down the walls and get those water droplet stains off and then you're going to be needing to do a full clean um, if you're using an artificial setup, meaning you just take all the um, artificial plants and um, bent and um, geez, like branches and stuff that you can sanitize and clean. Um, you're not going to really do that to the soil. You just have to spot clean the soil and add more as you need to. So temperament and handling crested geckos are very docile. Leopard gecko does have a video um, on her crested gecko biting her. However, and that's because her crested gecko was falling in a desperate attempt to not fall. Her crested gecko bit her finger and she claimed that she did not notice it until she looked down and saw that her gecko was biting her finger. They have very flimsy jaws and they don't really have a whole lot of teeth. So that also goes with feeding. You can't feed them anything with too hard of an exoskeleton, like mealworms. Crickets is on the line. It's your choice. Um, but I would never feed crickets to, not crickets, I would never feed mealworms to a crusty gecko because of how hard their exoskeleton is. They are very easy to handle as hatchings and young juveniles. They are going to be a little bit more energetic so you're going to keep an eye on those when you're handling them. Another thing is you want to encourage them to jump. Crested geckos do jump. However, they're not going to jump on your wall and scurry away like a house gecko. They're going to kind of maybe take a few steps. And if you just wait for them to stop and pick them up, that's going to be the easiest way to do it. But encouraging them to jump hand from hand, and you can see in the left photo, always recommend because you want to encourage them for what they're naturally meant to do. Price and availability. Geckos can these geckos can range anywhere from twenty dollars to two hundred plus dollars, just depending on the morph, the age, the gender, etc., etc., etc. Availability. Now these guys are literally almost everywhere. You can buy them online, buy them in store, and you can even go to Craigslist or other 
um, websites where you can find animals for rehoming. So I'm not a person about adopt, don't shop. I'm a person is properly shopping or adopting. You have to shop pro- correctly and not shop irresponsibly, like impulse buying. So PetSmart is a PetSmart or Petco, any really large chain um, pet store, I would not recommend. Not saying that they take terrible care of their animals. I think they make a great supply store. I love what they stand for. However, I think their care is a little off and that they may recommend so that might that may not be safe for your animal. So I do think they make a great supply store, but I don't think they make a the best um, animal supplier because they get from people who just mass breed and um, they usually will have sicknesses and health problems. So you can go to an expo and get a nice healthy one from a breeder like Tiki's Gecko or Altitude Geckos. Um, those are the only two I'm really aware of, although there are many, many other breeders. Just make sure it's not sketchy. Make, you know, kind of evaluate their stand and make sure that you feel like you can trust them. Trust them. Animark is a, um, I want to say it's only a local. I'm pretty sure they have other stores around the country in the U.S., but it's a really, really great pet store. They have great supplies. Are they more expensive? Yes. But they do have really reasonably pli- reasonably priced animals, and I think they take great care. I think their care is pretty good, and they have a really wide um, range of exotic animals. Now, why did I put Craigslist on here? It's because if you look up live crested gecko, live leopard gecko, you're going to see people trying to rehome their animals with supplies for extremely cheap prices because that's the only um that's their only way of getting rid of the animal so you can get a really nice um animal for a really cheap price and rehoming it instead of buying from a breeder doing this you can't be super picky on your morph your age your gender um so that's that also there's like pet finder is another good one that you can check out i just didn't put it on here but Pet Finder is a really good one. If you look up Crested Gecko or whatever animal you're looking for on Pet Finder, they will try to find people trying to rehome them. And that's why I like it. I. Okay, this is a glitch. Anyways, I give credit to um, YouTube and Google for my three intensive research years on Crested Geckos. I really hope y'all guys enjoyed this video. Thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all next time.